I do apologize if it was not clear that we were going to review for the final today. Uh, I, I think at one point I mentioned it, but I think the last class I did not mention that. I just think I just said it was a work day. So I apologize if you didn't come for that. Um, we are recording it though and, and you can watch it. And please, you can always email me. Uh, I check my email real regularly. So, All right. Um, in terms of format, the final will be like the JavaScript or PHP quiz. I figure you like them so much we might as well keep up. I didn't get my nap today, so I might be a little cranky. I did, I did try to make up for it with a cup of coffee, though. Uh, wrong way. Final will be a week from today. That's 12-7. From 6 to 8. The format will be very similar to the quizzes. Uh, you must contact me in advance if you're not able to take the final at the appointed time. I'm doing what I always criticize everyone else for doing, and that is reading word for word so that. So I'll, I'll try to stop. Um, well, some things bear repeated word for word. Um, the final quiz, whether I call it it or not, is going to be by definition comprehensive. I mean, you, you know, I, I could say that it's just over Ajax stuff, but given that Ajax is simply you know, a particular usage of JavaScript and PHP, obviously you need to know JavaScript and PHP to do AJAX. So um, it doesn't matter what I call it, consider it to be comprehensive. Um, as such, go back and review your, your JavaScript and PHP study guides. There will be um, questions relating to conceptual things. And there'll be questions relating to hands-on, much, much the same way as, as the, the other quizzes. A few things I want you to think about is, first of all, you know, how do AJAX applications differ from traditional applications? What might be something, what might make an application well-suited to be handled in an AJAX manner? versus poorly suited to be handled in an AJAX manner? That might be a good question. What are the different steps in the process? We talked a lot about how the client and server each have their own roles in the process. You know, in general broad terms, what are the steps that happen in, in an AJAX application? I would I guess I would I would describe four steps as, as, as being on that level. A little bit about the formats used to send data to and from the server and their respective advantages and disadvantages. Know about the request object, some of its attributes and methods, including the ready state and including the callback function. Then be able to write all or part of an AJAX application. I might ask you to write one particular section of it, or I might I might do kind of like I did last time. Um, you know, say this is your page. Write the section of code that's going to do this. Um, write the section of code that's going to assume that you got back a common delimited file. Um, parse it and put the first field in this div, the second field in that div, the third field in that div. Something like that. All right. Qu 
questions on any of this? Yes. Well, the data can come back from the server to the client in several different forms, right? One of the ways is it can be in the format of delimited data. The other way it could be XML, and the, and the third way, JSON. That's what I mean by format. Other questions? The contents of that function will differ based on the three different formats. In other words, you're getting the data back from the server in a different format. Therefore, the callback function is the function that gets called once the server is done and um, has sent the data back to the client. The, that, that callback function gets invoked every time the status changes. And when the status is four, the server's all done, and then the client can do its thing, which is going to involve taking the data that it got back from the server, parsing it one way or another, and then outputting it. But yeah, the content of that function is going to be probably the most different of any of the, any of the steps that we talk about in the AJAX process. I won't say it's, I won't say it's, yeah. Uh, the, the question, uh, the, the question was, is, is setting up and making the call, is that the same? And it, it's, yeah, it's kind of mostly the same. I mean, there's slight variations, but there's not huge differences. What you're asking for. What you're, yeah, making the request is pretty much similar. Typically, you grab some values from a form, you construct a URL, you use your uh, request object to set the URL, you set the ready state, the callback function, and then you fire away the request. So yeah, the process of, of looking at the form and pulling the data out, that's going to vary from application to application. But yeah, there's not huge differences in that. Um, the big difference, again, will be in the, in the callback function that formats the data. And of course, there'll be some variation on the server side as well, because that will format the data differently depending on the type that you're using. Other questions? <laughs> well, I, I might have, and I guess it depends on how, what you count as steps. I might have spoken more specific terms there. I guess what I'm thinking about is these will be the four steps that I'm mentioning now, and you can kind of see how that scores up against what, what I said before. Um, the first step is the creation of the request object. All right, that's one step. You've got to do that. The second step is making the request. The third step is the server processing the request and returning the output. And then the fourth step is the client grabbing that output, formatting it, and altering, altering the page. So do these coincide with the status? No. 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 Um, the, the making of the object you do when the web page opens, right? The create the request is usually tied to a user event. I might have listed that as two separate things, the user event and, and creating the request um, when I originally went over. But for example, on key down or on key up or on click or on mouse over or whatever, that's the user event that gets the ball rolling and that is what invokes the request to the server. The server doing its thing and producing the results, that's pretty self-evident, self-explanatory. And then finally the last step would be the, the client grabbing the results and then uh, parsing the, the output and, and displaying the callback function, right. A few years back when Gwen Stefani's hit was popular, I called that the hollaback function, but we'll, we'll stick with the callback function now. 
Too bad my daughter wasn't here for today's class. She'd have got a kick out of that. Yeah, yeah. Other questions? Yeah, I mean, the focus is going to be on, on AJAX applications, but I'm not sure if that really <laughs> is much of a hint, right? Uh, in AJAX applications, just like in regular plain old JavaScript, you need to pluck values out of the form. You, you might need to have an if statement in, in there. Um, well, you do. Um, you, you might have a loop in there. So me telling you that it's the it, it, the focus is going to be on AJAX applications really doesn't narrow down the PHP or the, 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 the JavaScript too much um, because you do all the things. It, it, you're still using it, right, right. But yeah, that, that kind of thing. So I would say the, the study guide for the, uh, either of the two quizzes would be good to, to review for, uh, for this one. Other questions? Yes. Um, like response text or response, um, I, I, I don't know if I'd call it part of the function. It, it's used by the function. You know, you, you, that, that, that callback function uses that. Uh, really, that response text and response XML are part of, the, part of the request object. The request is made and the answer comes back as one of these two response properties. So, um, yeah, definitely that, that function will use that, that re, you know, either response text or response XML. But um, I, I don't know if I would term it as being part of it, but yeah, it, it's used in it. Other questions? The only one that is different is XML, and that uses response XML. And you know that even by looking at the PHP, because in the PHP uh, code for that, we'll, we'll output a different header. We'll identify ourselves as returning XML as opposed to returning text. Other questions? Going once. Okay. Some of those might be better addressed in lab if it's about that. Oh, well, go ahead. Shoot. Yeah, whoever's saying that is is on the mark. I was gonna, I was gonna gonna show it. So, yeah. In other words, yeah. If you look, here's the XML that gets outputted in my dictionary example, and in this guy, 
I am doing a similar thing where I'm saying word sub zero index sub zero. I can cheat and do that because I know my XML file only has one word and one index tag per item tag. So if I grab all the tags that are of, of items and then I loop through them, I know for a fact that word is only in there once and therefore um, I, I'm, I'm good. I don't have to, uh, I don't have to like loop through the, uh, the, the word in there. Yeah, like for example, if, if you know, we did multilingual, if we had a, a, an English and a, a French or whatever, then yeah, we'd be in trouble because we're just grabbing the first one. We'd have to actually loop through and, and, and do something for that. Yeah, it would be the length of... Um, yes. Yeah, word equals that, right. It would be exactly. Well, yeah, I, 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 would, I would change this. I wouldn't grab the zeroth element. I'd grab all of them. And then I would loop through them uh, till I is less than word, as long, rather, as I is less than word length. Make sense? Yes. That's what this part of the if state, or um, the, I'm sorry, this is what this part of the for statement says. I plus plus means each time through the loop increment I by one. Yes. Which version? XML or? Okay. All right. Uh huh. Well, first of all, I need to loop through the entire array before I know that no words matched. So therefore, I can't do this. I can't do this check until I've gone through everything. All right? So once I, if I go through the first one and that word doesn't match, well, then the second one might match. All right? So that's part of the reason. The other part of the reason is let's make sure we understand what this means. This will return a zero if the string is found at the start of, if the substring is found at the start of the string. So, for example, if, I t if the word is absolute and the letters I'm searching for are A, B, then it will return a zero. If it doesn't find it, it doesn't return a zero, it returns a false, okay, which is different than a zero. And if it's elsewhere in, uh, in the word, um, like if uh, I looked for A, B, and the word was fabulous, all right, then it would return a one, which means it's not at the beginning. So I wouldn't want it either. So I only want it when that function equals zero. All right. Other questions? Well, let's see. Did I ask you to write, to, to pull the region? Okay. That's why I didn't ask you to pull the region, because I knew that that was uh, trouble. Yeah, you have to write code. See, there's your answer. Write code. And, uh, no. <laughs> You, 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 yeah, you, well, you'd, you'd check to see if it's null. No. 
No, a null is different than that. Oh, you're going to make me. No, I'm just kidding. JavaScript if null. Yeah, there's there's a few ways that you could do it. Yeah, there's a couple ways to do it with the with what we called in Unix the bang, the exclamation point. That that means if it, that it is not null. No, that means it does not exist, so it is null, right? Yes? Can you check and see if um, a div is null or a. Well, like a div? A, a, a div uh, uh, the, the inner HTML I don't think would ever turn out to be null. It probably would be an empty string. And, and I, I guess the question I would ask is why you're testing for that. If, if you're building your table. Uh-huh. Something there, then you can Yeah, I don't I don't think that's the I don't think that's the approach you want to take because you probably will create a table to, depending on how you write it you probably will create a table and a row of headers um no you're not creating a table tag Yeah, uh, I, I'm thinking the, the most straightforward way to do this will be to always create the table tag, always create the first header, then loop through. There's, there's, probably, there's other easier ways to look to see. If length of that array equals zero, you know that no data is returned. I th no, that's not it. Um, yeah, if the, if the length of that array is zero, that should tell you that, that no people were, were returned, I would think. Other questions? All right, do feel free to email me. We will, um, let's, let's walk over to lab and uh, we'll go from there.